Today we're going to talk about conditional and branching statements. If you recall your earlier training on the fundamental elements of any computer program, you'll probably remember that conditional and branching statements are used to control the flow of execution of a computer program. Conditional statements check whether a condition is present or not, and branching statements are directions to execute one of two or more available paths of execution for the computer program. Let's do some examples of this. Here are some examples of conditional statements. Conditional statements are written in the following format. As one statement, the condition to be checked is written down. Here's examples. Here, age greater than or equal to 25, we have a condition to be checked. What's the condition to be checked? Is the variable called age having a value that's greater than or equal to 25? That's a condition to be checked, a conditional statement. Here's an example. Another variable called color, is it equal to the text blue? Notice that we have two equal statements. Now, not every single computer language you encounter will use the exact methodology you see here, where two equal, uh, equal statements are used to denote equality on either side, but nearly always that's the, the case. Here's another example, a variable called GPA, checking is it equal to 3.75. The way to read these in English is, is the thing on the left what's stipulated in the middle relative to the right? Now, it's rather cumbersome, but if you look at that, these examples, that's what's being checked. The condition right in the middle, is it true? Is it true? This goes back to the fact that instructions to computers cannot be unambiguous. You can't have, for example, age close to 25. What does that mean? Well, it completely depends on the context. If you're doing precise calculations based on ages down to the day, well, then 25 years and 12 days might be close to 25. If you're doing calculations on whether or not a person's allowed to rent a car, Close to doesn't cut it. You have to be greater than or equal to 25. So computers need unambiguous statements. These conditional statements are unambiguous. They either are or are not met. Are not met. They are or are not, tr are not true. So again, let's make this go back and we'll say age greater than or equal to 25. So here's the conditional statement. And overall, there is a condition to be checked. This is technically a conditional operator. The whole thing is the statement. Good, there's conditional statements. Now let's see how we use them. Here's a diagram that shows how branch instructions work. The main path of execution for a computer program is being executed. All that means is they start at the top and in order they're executing instructions. And when I say they, I mean the computer. The computer is executing the instructions and it hits a conditional statement. It hits something like age greater than or equal to 25. Now, farther on down the program are at least two paths of execution. These are computer instructions. They're different from one path to the next. It would be absurd to make two identical paths when you're trying to check the condition and have one of two separate things happen based on the condition. So you have two different paths or more. You hit a conditional statement and there's a branch instruction and it says if and then it checks the conditional statement and it branches or switches the path of execution based on whether or not that conditional statement checked was true or false. That's a diagram of how a branch instruction would work in coordination with conditional statements. So let's put that down in pseudocode, essentially fake code close enough for understanding. Remember, instructions are executed in order. So here first, the computer will ask for input and the person will put in their age. Next, the computer will analyze this statement. It analyzes the condition, age greater than or equal to 25. And then based on that being true or false, either executes the next statement or jumps over here to an else and executes that statement. This is much like 
the diagram that we looked at. with two different paths of execution. A conditional statement, it's true or false, there's a branching instruction to execute one path or to execute another path. Here, that's our conditional statement. Here and here are the branching instructions. So, if someone puts in 18, this is evaluated, it's found to be not true, so we don't execute this print. We instead go here to the else and we execute this print. You can't rent a car. If, however, the person puts in 25 or higher as an age, say they put in 98, then we will print, you can't rent a car. And again, this isn't 100% exactly like computer languages that you'll use, but it's extremely close. And you'll find that as you learn di different languages, the syntax here, the arrangement of the words and symbols will be very, very much like what you see here. And again, this is an example of using conditional statements and based on the evaluation of that statement, whether it's true or false, branching to one or another path of execution within the program. Now let's discuss another fundamental construct of a computer program, loops. Loops are something that are quite familiar once you see them the first time. You've used them all your life. In computer programs, loops are repeating a section of the program based on conditions. Let's look at a pseudocode example of that. Here is a computer program. First, we ask for input from the user. They tell us how many birthdays they have. Then. We create a variable called counter, and we set it to equal zero. We have two variables now. We have birthdays that the person entered, and we have counter that the program has set up initially to be zero. Now we do something kind of cool. We use a new instruction, new to you, called while. What it means is whatever the little subsection of program that's just below it is, do that while the conditional statement here is true. In other words, while this is true, do these two instructions. Let's look at how this works. Your niece puts in three. It's her third birthday, I'm three. The computer now has birthdays equal to three. Now, the computer says, okay, good. I'm gonna set counter to zero. It has counter equal to zero. And it gets to this statement while counter less than birthdays. It says, well, well, right now, counter is equal to zero. And birthdays is equal to three. Hmm. Yeah, counter is in fact less than birthdays because zero is less than three. So this is true. So it does these two instructions. And look at this really closely. The first one's pretty simple. It's going to print happy birthday on the screen, but then it's going to take the value of counter and give it a new value. It's going to make it equal to its current value plus one. If its current value is zero and we add one, that means it's now equal to one. And now the two instructions that are contained within this while instruction, the print and the increasing counter, they've been done. So now the computer goes back up here and checks again. It says, is counter less than birthdays? Counter is equal to one now. Birthday stayed the same. We didn't do anything to change it. This is still true. One is less than three. So it executes, again. it executes it again. It prints on the screen, happy birthday. Now we've got happy birthday twice. And then it makes counter equal to its current value plus one. Well, its current value is one. Add one is two. So now counter is equal to two. And remember, the computer keeps track of all this. It has little locations in memory that are assigned to store the value of counter and little locations in memory that are, designed, that are uh, assigned to store the value of birthdays. So it just, whenever it has to do this statement, it just looks in the memory location and says, well, what do I have? Yeah. Well, this time around, it's got a two for counter and a three for birthdays. Two is still less than three. So it does this again. It prints a third happy birthday. And then it takes counter, which is currently equal to two, adds one, and makes it three. 
And it's done. There's nothing else inside this little while section. So it goes back up and says, all right, let me check this out. It checks out the value of counter. It's three. Value of birthdays. It's three. It checks. Is three less than three? No, it's not. It's false. That is not true. So it doesn't do these steps. Instead, it moves on with the computer program. It does this one, which is not included in this whole while thing. And it just prints, enjoy your presence. So there is a computer program. This is demonstrating a loop. The loop, as you are able to surmise, is right here. The while is a looping statement. Looping statements always have a condition to be checked because if you remember from a couple minutes ago, I described a loop as a section of the computer program that can be repeated based on conditions. So we have a conditional statement and we have a loop statement. The loop checks the condition and executes the code, the computer instructions, in its loop based on that condition. 